prepare yourself. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Tell to sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea, echo back ye ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom, when the heart for mercy craves. Sing him triumph over the tomb, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Mm. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Mm. What name? Jesus. Hmm. Oh, no, no, no. See, uh, uh, according to the Greek, it's Yehashua. Or Yehashua. It's <laughs> a really dumb one. Uh, Yehawashii. Yehawashii or something. Yehawashahasha. Uh, Gesundheit. Hmm. Whose name? Hmm. There's so many names, right? Please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean, okay? Don't just sit there. Get the scriptures, not a Bible. Get the scriptures. Yes, I know this says Bible. Yes, it is. but here in the text, it doesn't. Okay, I, I'm not dropping that. Not gonna happen. Okay, get the scriptures. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove because sometimes the lips go a little bit faster than the brain. You know what I'm saying? Okay? Check me out. Check me out. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures. Why do these things be so? Okay? Please. Please follow me along. And I'm going to speak to you as if you are. Okay? If you have a question about context, feel free at any time to pause the video and... Search the scriptures yourself, okay? We're going to be talking about whose name? Hmm. Because 
one of the many things that Satan is attacking and has been with his yea hath God said, which has been going on for centuries, um, is whose name? What name? It's actually Yeshua. Yehashua. Yehashua. Yehashawashi. <laughs> what, what are we talking about? A DVD player? Or a motorcycle or something? Pardon you, Shemitic brethren over in China and that, or Japan. Sorry for that. And I just, you know. But it, it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It's yea hath God said. It's yea hath God said. Who saves? Yehashua. Oh, Joshua. No, in the Greek. Which Greek? Which Greek? The Greek of the te Texas Receptus. Which edition of the Texas Receptus are you talking about? Huh? Which one? The one from 1611? Or the ones that come afterwards? Hmm? Which one? Yea, has God said. We're going to be talking about this today. Now, we have a process that we are going to be going through, okay? Because some of you are like, well, the obvious, yes, the obvious uh, in Philippians, we, we're going to get to that towards the end of this. But we have a process in which we're going to go through, okay, to see what the scriptures say about this, okay? Because you got these people who uh, say they are Jews and are not, are saying that the name Jesus is a pagan name. Yea, hath God said. They call themselves Jews and they're not. Okay? And then you got the scholars trained by Jesuits. Well, the Greek word or the Hebrew word, yea, hath God said. See, the Hebrew and the Greek... We're stepping stones to give us this, the authorized version, the English, okay? And the, the Jesuit trained scholars, what do they do? They say to us of the church of the living God who hold to absolute truth, the authorized version, they say what? You're saying that people have to learn English in order to have what God said or to know what God said. Flip it right back on them. It's like, uh, you're saying, that people need to learn Koine Greek and scriptural Hebrew to perhaps maybe know what God says. But there again, in order to do that, you got to go to a Jesuit-run university, pay upwards to $100,000 or an arm and a leg and your firstborn, and even then, they teach you through the Greek lexicons and the whatever, you still don't know. Do you? It's like, well, it's the it's the closest translation that we have, but it's not perfect. Yea, hath God said. You look here on YouTube. You look on other platforms. You see the devastation that Satan hath wrought through yea, hath God said. Okay? I would show a little bit more respect for one of these people if they were to say, well... I believe that the ESV is the perfect, inspired, given by inspiration word of God. <laughs> You're crazy. I would have a little bit more respect for one of uh, someone who would say something like that. At least, at least, now they're totally wrong, okay? The authorized version is the perfect, given by inspiration, word of God, okay? This is it. We have what God hath said in the authorized version, Okay? But if someone is going to at least take a stand and say, well, I believe that the ESV, they are acknowledging, they are saying that something is without error. Now, they're wrong. The ESV, no, of course not. But that's just an example. See, them doing that, they're saying that there is a perfect standard. But see, you, these people go to these Jesuit colleges and schools, and they say, well, it's the closest one. The New American Standard. Well, it's it's the best one that we have. There are some of these twits out there who said, well, the King James, it's the best translation we got, but it's not perfect. 
you need to put your favorite hand in the toilet and flush it. Okay? Let that cool water splash on your face for a little while. Okay? But see, the A hath God said crowd. They come out, well, we got something that's close, but there is no such thing as a perfect set of scriptures. No such thing. God who created the, 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 the world and the, the universes and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the stars and the constellations and whatnot. Uh, yes, uh, he, he can't preserve a book. He can't preserve his words, even though he promises to do so in Psalm chapter 12. Okay? Like the, the one um, individual that I came across, or came across me, I should say, who had a Ishmaelic name. Was it a male, a female? I don't know. Was it, uh, was it truly a uh, son of Ishmael? I don't know. Was it a Hamite? I don't know. Uh, was it a uh, Japheth, Japhethite? I don't know. But uh, it's like, well, you know, you make a big thing about uh, study the issue thyself approved on the God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And this, uh, this um, willfully ignorant fool said, in the Greek, divide doesn't really mean divide. <sighs> you you got to be educated to be that stupid. Stupid. Willfully ignorant. Stupid. And when it comes to this about the, whose name, you're gonna, you'll see a lot of people... When they come to this, whose name, okay? A lot of people will go, will re resort to, well, the Greek or the Hebrew. Look, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, okay? This, the authorized version, is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, okay? The Greek and the Hebrew were stepping stones to come to this. You take this and translate this into other tongues. You use the English. The uh, Greek and the Hebrew are passe because it gives us this, okay? All right? Okay? But a lot of the people who bring up this argument, who attack the beautiful, holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Well, the Greek, yea, hath God said. Or the Hebrew, yea, hath God said. Ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay? But about this, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 20. Psalm 20. This could be extraordinarily in-depth, and it's going to be kind of in-depth for itself. But, um, <laughs> like I said, this could be extraordinarily in-depth. But uh, we're not going to get too in-depth. But uh, th this ain't milk. Okay? This ain't milk. Now there, that's 13 minutes. Uh, that's all you um, willfully ignorant fools, you sad disciples of that Mark the Messenger. Uh, that's as much as you can handle. So you go run along and say, don't judge and go ahead and bow down to your filthy Messiah. Okay? The one that you have chosen for yourself. Yeah. Psalm 20. Psalm 20. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. The name of the God of Jacob. What's his name? What's his name? Well, there's so many names. Hmm. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy, sacri remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Shelah. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Okay? Yeah. 
we will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. What's his name? Hmm. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Right hand. God, right hand, synonymous with Jesus Christ, okay? That doesn't mean you blessed southpaws out there are anti-whatever, okay? No, no. But sitting on the right hand of God, synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Some trust in chariots, their riches, their wealth, the things that Satan gives them, the things of the world. And some in horses. Now, the Egyptians are men, not God. And the horses are flesh and not spirit. That's from Isaiah. I think that's Isaiah 29 or 30, one of those. Okay? But, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen. <laughs> And stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Wh whose name? Whose name? Hmm. Whose name? Now, keep in mind, Psalm 20 was written by David, king of the Jews, okay? Under the dispensation of the law which was faith and works. Eternal security was not there under the law. We are not in that dispensation today, okay? This is the time of the Gentiles. By his grace through our faith, we are saved, okay? By his grace, okay? All right? You don't keep the law today. We have talked about that obnoxiously enough, okay? But you got to remember that. This is in a different dispensation. But, whose name? Turn now to Exodus chapter 6. Okay? Exodus. This is basically, this is where we're going to be catapulting off on into this um, that we are looking at. Exodus chapter 6. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the Lord said unto Moses, Moses or Moshe? <laughs> then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appear, now pay attention. Look, look in the scripture, don't look at me. And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Now, for those playing home game, uh, Jehovah, Jehovah. This is actually not the first time that a variation of the word, of the name Jehovah appears. Okay, this is the first time it appears in its singular form, Jehovah. Okay, it appears elsewhere before this. Okay, but we're, we're going to examine that. But also too, God Almighty. Okay? God Almighty. All right? So in verse 3, this is a loaded, packed verse right here. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Now, when you look into the phrase, God Almighty, you will see that it, I think it only appears within the Torah, the first five books, especially up to 
um, Genesis, uh, in Genesis. And then it doesn't appear again until the book of Revelation. You, you do the study yourself, okay? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that it's, um, I know that God Almighty does not appear in the Pauline epistles, okay? All right? But um, it doesn't appear in the New Testament until the book of Revelation. Very, very interesting. One second, one second. Yes, God Almighty appears up to, in the Torah, the first five books, Exodus chapter 6. And then in Revelation chapter 4 is when the next time God Almighty appears. Okay, we're going to touch on that a little bit deeply here a little bit. Okay, but we see again, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Now, when you read Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 15. Okay, go there. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Okay. And God said, un, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. I am. Okay? And as we're going to see, what is, what accompanies the name Jehovah, it is salvation, saving. Okay? We're going to see this. And I am, I am is the statement of an eternal being. That is a statement that only an eternal being can make. Okay? And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. This is my name forever. I am. I am. He has always been. He will always be. He has no beginning. He has no end. Okay? All right? That is a title. I am. I am. This is my name forever. I am. I am. I am. That's, that's the statement of an eternal being. Satan cannot say, I am. You cannot say, I am. Even though that filth, scumbag, punk, puke, vomitous pig, Joel Osteen, working off of the secret, says, the power of I am. Even Oprah Winbag and Kenneth Doplin. It's like, well, I am too. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I am. When you read the book of John, like I've said to you before, take your pen and circle every time you see the Lord say, I am. Very significant in the book of John. Okay? But now, speaking of, go to John chapter 8. Okay? John chapter 8. See, the generations, like we said in the previous video, the generations of old will look at the generation today and the generations preceding even this generation and will be like, wow, you, you, you guys are, we, we, we deserve to be where we are at in hell. Yes, but you guys, <laughs> you guys are far worse than we are. Yeah, 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 we touched on that in the previous video. Yeah. Yeah, the, the previous generations, they're, they're the, the ones that didn't come to the Lord on his terms, they're in hell, okay? They're in hell, waiting to be cast off into the lake of fire, okay? They're in hell, all right? They, and they deserve to be there. But when those who are in hell look at the, those of today, it's like, wow, what we did was bad, but what you guys are doing is on a whole different level. Okay, okay. But John chapter 8, verses 57 on to verse 59. 
John chapter 8, verses 57 on to verse 59. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? She said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. That is the statement of an eternal being. Okay? Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And today, with, you know, the Joel Osteens and the Kenneth Doplins and the uh, Oprah Windbags um, saying, well, I am, the power of I am. And the Jews went to stone God the Father himself. And you got to people today bowing down to this um, philosophy of the power of I am. Calling yourself God. Similar to Satan with his five I wills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And while we're on this, okay, so the Jews clearly understood that the Lord Jesus Christ referred to himself as God the Father. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. No, Jesus did not say, I am God. He didn't need to. That was enough, okay? And, and let's look at another appearance here. John chapter 10, verse 27 on to verse 33. John 10, 27 on to verse 33. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally still under the law, because the perfect sacrifice had yet to be made. Keep that in mind. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay? Out of my hand. Okay? Now pay attention. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. My hand, my Father's hand. Okay? Now here it is. I and my Father are one. The soul of the Godhead. Okay? God is comprised of a spirit, a soul, and a body, okay? Not three persons, okay? That's blasphemy, okay? But God has a spirit, God has a soul, and God has a body. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. You and I are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, okay? When the Lord says, I and my Father are one, the Father is the soul of the Godhead, okay? The Word made flesh is the body, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit, not a little dove that goes around dropping droppings on people, okay? So the Lord says, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? This, this, these are things that the Jehos really don't care for. <laughs> the Jews answered him, saying, For good works we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. So see, the Jews understood, knew that what the Lord had said, that he was God the Father. Okay, the Jehos say that uh, Jesus never accepted worship or something, some nonsensical kind of thing like that. Okay, and a lot of people like to say, well, Jesus never said, I am God. They're right. He never said, I am God. No, he didn't. They're right on that. He didn't need to. When you encounter someone like this, you know, like with the sons of Ishmael. One plus one plus one blah, 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 equals three. Yes, you're right. Bravo. Yes. Yes, you're right. And yes, you're right. Jesus never said, I am God. He didn't need to. Him saying, I am, is enough. Because the Jews understood on two occasions that he called himself the Father. Okay? And what name? Who is this? 
Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, and, just, and another thing that you can mention to these um, willfully ignorant, uh, wicked Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, um, the word Jehovah does not appear in the New Testament. Even in their blood clot and fart uh, Greek New Testament, their interlinear, which is based off of blood clot and fart, West Scott and Hort, uh, blood clot and farts uh, Greek manuscript, okay? Even it says so in the preface of the thing, okay? Even in that, the word Jehovah doesn't appear, but they use the word Jehovah, okay? Yeah. Yeah, have God said. Okay? All right. Now, go to Genesis chapter 22. Okay? Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter... I am is a statement of an eternal being. Okay? I am. Like I said, you read the book of John, and throughout when our Lord Jesus Christ speaks and uses... Like I said... Do the study yourself. Take your pen or your pencil and circle every time that the Lord in the book of John says, I am. Very, very interesting, very rewarding, fruitful study that will be for you to do that. Give you a little bit more respect for this thing about I am. Okay. And also an abhorrence to those who take the I am like that lightly and blasphemously. Okay. But Genesis chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22, verses 3 on to verse 14. Come on, fingers work with me. Okay. Genesis chapter 22, verses 3 on to verse 14. Okay. Oh, and wait a minute, wait a minute. We skipped one. We skipped one. Beg your pardon. Uh, looking at Exodus chapter 6, let's read that again. Sorry. My, my notes are a little sporadic because the Lord gave this to me last night. Exodus chapter 6, before we get to Genesis chapter 22. Uh, Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 on verse 3 again. Let's refresh. Now the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known unto them. Like I said, um, God Almighty appears in the Torah up to Exodus chapter 6. Okay? Then it's mysteriously absent until, until Revelation chapter 4, verse 8. And we're going to look at that one a little bit, okay? And interesting, too, about Revelation chapter 4. What happens in Revelation chapter 4? Come up hither! And it's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, uh, Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. We want verses 25 and 26. Genesis chapter 4, verses 25 and 26. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And of course, the bloodline of Cain, I believe, absolutely died in the flood. Okay? And to Seth, to him also there was a son born. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. Excuse me. And he called his name Enos. Then began man to call upon the name of the Lord. Hmm. Now go to Genesis chapter 22. Okay, Genesis chapter 22. Verse 3 on to verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up 
and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and took a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. God will provide himself, himself a lamb for burnt offering. Himself. He himself will be the burnt offering. Okay? The Bibles really messed this up. Because the Bibles have to promote the Satanic Roman Catholic Trinity, remember. Okay? <clears throat> yes. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, and he said Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. Now, it's not, you got to remember, no here is relational. The Lord knew what Abraham was going to do. Check out the, the video in the description box again, okay? God knew what Abraham was going to do. The no here, for now I know that thou fearest God, is relational, okay? Now he knows he, he has that relationship part with Abraham because he did what he said he was, he did what he told him to do, okay? It's not that God didn't know what Abraham was going to do. The knowing there is, I know him now, okay? Through relation, okay? Because you read when he was going to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I know, Abraham, that he will order his house after me. Relational, okay? This is talking about relational, the relational. He told uh, Abraham to offer his only son, okay? <laughs> what does he say um, in verse 2? And he said, take now thy son, thine only son. Isaac was not his only begotten son, by the way. Wasn't, okay? Ishmael was the son of Abraham before Isaac. Yes, we've talked about that in many other videos before. I'm not going to get off on that, okay? And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac. Okay? Thine only son. All right? F the promised son. The only promised son that he gave him right there. Okay? Isaac. Okay? He promised him Isaac. And he said that his descendants would be as the, the stars and as the sand of the sea. That kind of thing. Okay? But he said, offer your son unto me. And he obeyed. And in that, the relational aspect. That is what the know means. God knew what Abraham was going to do. If God didn't know, then God doesn't know everything. And if God doesn't know everything, why in the name of are we serving a God who doesn't know the beginning from the end? Okay? And if we are serving, uh, why are we serving a God who is incapable of preserving his word? but needs the Jesuits to do it. Right. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thine, thy son, thine only son from me. Relational. He was willing to, and he knew he was going to do this, okay? But he was willing to give up his only son, his son of promise, because the Lord said so. That's relational, okay? It's not that God didn't know. The know there is relational. 
Be careful with that when people try to deceive you with that. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his son. And right here. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Okay. That is the first time that the word Jehovah appears. But look at how it's being used. Okay. Look at how it's being used. Okay. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. What does that mean? As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. The Lord sees. Okay? That Jehovah Jireh is the first time that the word Jehovah appears. In its totality, guess how many times the word Jehovah appears? Seven. Seven times. All in the Old Testament. All in the Old Testament. There's a reason for that. And we're going to get on that. But now, while we're on this, okay? While we're on this, now let's see another appearance of the of this. But look at look at that. Look at that. Jehovah Jireh. Look at that. Okay? Now the Lord said in Exodus chapter 6 that but by my name Jehovah was they or did they not know? But yet Abraham uses Jehovah Jireh. He's referring to a place as Jehovah Jireh. Okay? Unless, uh, unless, this, unless the scripture is a lie, and of course the scripture is not a lie, uh, in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, And I appeared unto Abraham, and, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. Okay? But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Jehovah. Okay? But yet he uses Jehovah Jireh in correlation to a place. Okay? To a place. He was not referring to the Lord himself as Jehovah, but rather attributing to a place Jehovah Jireh. Okay? Or else, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3 is a lie. And of course, that's not, this isn't a lie. Okay? But, all right. Now, also, let's look at another example of this. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter, oh, no, no, no. There's one before that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. Here's another incident. Now, this Exodus chapter 17, okay, is after boom, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Okay, so by the name Jehovah. Okay, so now the name Jehovah is out there for the children of Israel. Okay, but in Exodus chapter 17, we're going to see this again. Verses 14 on to verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial and a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisai. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Jehovah Nisai, excuse me, Jehovah Nisai, what does that mean? Because the Lord hath sworn, the Lord swears. Okay? And not cursing you filthy fools. No. Swears by himself, because there is no greater. Okay? And here's another one. Here's another one. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. Okay? Now, we saw that, right? Like with Abraham, Jehovah, um, Jehovah Jireh. Okay? God sees. Okay? God swears. Okay? All those that we have looked at with the Jehovah uh, Jireh and Jehovah Nisai are attributed on to places. Okay? Now, ex uh, we already looked at that. Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, 
verses 21 and verse 24. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh of the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said unto him, Pay attention. Peace be unto thee. Fear not. Thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abizarites. So, the other two were of places, and of this, then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord, and he called it the altar, the place where he built it, the altar itself, Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day it is yet in Ophrah of the Abizarites. Again, Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. Peace. Peace. King of Salem. Salem in the New Testament. Salem. Peace. Okay? Peace. Shalom. Uh, shalom peace. Salem. Okay? So, Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Jireh. God sees. A place. Jehovah Nisai. God swears. A place. Jehovah Shalom. An altar. Designated in where? In Ophrah of the Abizarites. Okay? Those are affixed with places or a thing. Okay? All right? But now, go to Genesis chapter 28. We're going to look at this um, God Almighty. Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Uh, we're, we are actually going to look at every appearance in the Old Testament of God Almighty. Okay? Very few. Very few. Uh, Exodus chapter 28. All right? Genesis. Did I say Exodus? <laughs> Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Beg your pardon. Okay? And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him. And said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Rise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethel thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, or Laban, thy mother's brother. Hmm. And God, and God Almighty, bless thee. And make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram unto Laban, son of Bethel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. God Almighty blessed the lad. Now, there is no scriptural proof that, like in uh, Genesis chapter 4, when men started to call upon the name of the Lord, there is absolutely no scriptural proof to prove that they were calling, uh, saying, calling the Lord Jehovah. <coughs> there is no scriptural proof to that. None whatsoever. Okay? The name Jehovah, as we see in, uh, where is that? Uh, in, um, uh, in, uh, where he says uh, Jehovah uh, Jireh, okay, we saw that in Jehovah Jireh, okay, yes, Jehovah was known, but God wasn't known by that name until Exodus 6, 3. He was, he said it himself in Exodus 6, 3. He was known unto them, unto Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, Israel, by God Almighty. It says it itself in the scriptures. So there is no evidence that they are, were calling the Lord Jehovah immediately after the, um, after the dispensation of the Garden of Eden. There's no evidence to support that. Rather, 
what we are seeing is that he was known as, like he says, God Almighty. God Almighty. Okay? And like I said, uh, Lord of hosts, Lord God of hosts. Okay, we're not we're gonna not gonna look in that. Lord God of hosts appears 39 times in the scriptures, roughly. And Lord of hosts appears roughly 235 times, okay? Those are, so, are more so titles, okay? We're not going to be looking at that. And just so you know, um, God of Ho Lord God of hosts appears first in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10, okay? And the last time that appears, Lord God of hosts, is in the book of Amos, okay? The first time the Lord of hosts appears is in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3. And the last time the Lord of hosts appears is in Malachi. I wish you never had said that to me, brother. Malachi. So, Lord God of hosts, Lord of hosts, clearly an Old Testament thing. Okay? Clearly. Clearly. We're not going to be focusing on that. Okay, because the argument isn't of referring to him as the Lord God of hosts or the Lord of hosts. No, it's the name of Jesus that is being disputed by these devils. Okay, so we are going through this process. Okay, now, Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. Verses 9 on to verse 15. And God appeared unto Jacob again, when he came out of Padan Aram, and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. God said unto him, Are you looking at that? I am God Almighty. Okay? I am God Almighty. I am, look at that. I am, I am, okay, God Almighty. You see that? And again, going back to Exodus chapter 6, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Hmm. Like I said, there is not one shred of evidence that says that people were calling him Jehovah before Abraham came along, okay? Their argument will be when Abraham said Jehovah Jireh. But then again, what do you do with this? Exodus chapter 3. Uh, Exodus chapter 3. Ver, uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. What do you do with that? Okay? All right? But God Almighty... God Almighty, go back to Exodus chapter 35, okay? <clears throat> Verse 11 again. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee, will, to thee I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereupon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him Bethel. Okay? Now, this is interesting. Okay? This is interesting. Jacob became Israel. The time of Jacob's trouble the time of Israel's trouble, okay? So there is a change in name, how Jacob is to be known. Are your gears working with that a little bit? There is a change of how Jacob was to be known. God doesn't change. But see, the way God deals with men changes. That's what changes. He never changes. But how he is to be known today, it's not how he was known at, in other dispensations. 
was he? No. And on that, go to Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 on to verse 30. And he said unto him, this is when Jacob wrestled with God. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. What does that name mean? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Prince. Prince with God and men. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of man. Mm. Son of David, king of the Jews. Mm. God the Father. Mm. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed them there. Blessed him there. Interesting, huh? And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. He saw God face to face. This means that Jacob wrestled with God. A precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, precarnate. Okay. In the Old Testament, God would appear as a man at different times, okay? Just poop, appear. Like when he um, appeared to Abraham with his two angels, okay? That wasn't the Trinity, you wicked Catholics, okay? The other two were angels. The other one was the Lord himself in the form of a man, okay? All right? But let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, yeah, we already looked at that. Okay, Genesis chapter 43 now. Genesis chapter 43. Genesis chapter 43, verses 11 on to verse 14. And their father Israel said unto them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double money in your hand. And the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again into your in your hand, for adventure it was an oversight. Take also your brother and arise and go unto the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of, ch of my children, I am bereaved. God Almighty again. Okay? Scripture proving itself. All right. And now Genesis chapter 48. Genesis chapter 48. Beg your pardon. Verses 1 on to verse 4. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, excuse me, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And of course, the last time in the Torah, in the Old Testament, that God Almighty appears is in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. The next time that it appears is in Revelation, and it appears, God Almighty appears in the book of Revelation six times. And that's something, okay? And that's something. But Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4, Verse 8, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Hmm. Interesting. 
Very interesting. And what's significant to about Revelation chapter 4? Look at verse 1. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. After this, I looked and behold, the door was open in heaven. And there, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither! That's the redemption of the purchase possession. Yes. And I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Yes. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? So, God Almighty appears only in the Old Testament. Okay. But it appears in the book of... Not only in the Old Testament, excuse me. It appears in the Old Testament up to Exodus chapter 6. Then the next time it appears six times in the book of Revelation. Hmm. In the book of Revelation, where the majority of it is about the time of Jacob's trouble, time of Jacob's trouble, and the latter ends of the book of Revelation are talking about the kingdom of heaven and the final and seventh dispensation eternity. Hmm. He knows, see, the Lord knows the end from the beginning, okay? But now, Jehovah, 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 Psalm 83, Psalm 83, verses 13, on to verse 18. Now, we're looking at the singular of Jehovah. We saw the first singular of Jehovah in Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. We have seen places and an altar and the altar that was in that place attributed with Jehovah, what were they again? Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisai, and Jehovah Shalom. Okay? What was it? Uh, God sees, God swears, peace. God of peace. Okay? God hears, God swears, God of peace. Okay, all right. All they were attributed unto places, and the one was the altar in that one place. Okay, but now the singular Jehovah, Jehovah, and in Exodus when Jehovah first appears in its singular form. Okay, what is it in context of? Of him sending Moses so that the Lord through Moses can do what? Rescue his people. Does the name Jehovah mean? Psalm 83, verses 13 on verse 18. You can read this whole psalm. On. Here's a point where you pause the video and read Psalm 83 yourself, okay? Verses 13 on verse 18. Oh my God, the shift in this psalm, by the way. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind. As the fire burneth the wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded in trouble forever, yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Now, you read this whole psalm. Pause the video. Read the psalm yourself. The whole context, okay? Read it. We didn't today because we still got quite a bit to go through, okay? But pause the video. Read the, read the, the be a Berean, okay? And you'll see the context, okay? The turning point in Psalm 83 is verse 13. Oh God, Virtually every single psalm, virtually except Psalm 117, it's, it's, <laughs> it's only two verses, okay? But virtually every psalm has a turning point, a shift of the focus, okay? Some have several, especially the longer ones, okay? But here it is, uh, Psalm 13. In the entire context of Psalm 83, you'll see... This is a result of being persecuted. Okay? So God 
defending, protecting, taking care of his own, saving his own, judging his own, and defending and casting judgment upon those who mess with his own. Okay? Like I said, pause the video, read Psalm 83. Do it! Okay? <laughs> Come on, be a Berean. All right? Now, go to Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. Now, hopefully, we can finish this chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 12, uh, with, within the time frame of three hours. Hopefully. Now, pay attention to the context. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisai, Jehovah Shalom. Hmm. And did not what we looked at in Psalm 83, God, uh, Jehovah Nisai, God sees, and vengeance. Hmm. But remember, Jehovah Nisai, Jehovah um, uh, Jireh, Jehovah Shalom were attributed unto places and to an altar. Okay? You got to remember that. Got to remember that for what we already explained, okay? Behold, first look at verse 2 here in Isaiah 12. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Jesus saves Jesus saves. Ooh, you get it? Let's continue. He also has become my salvation. Wow, what a power-packed verse of Scripture right there as giving us a clue to what Jehovah actually means. Therefore, with joy shall we draw water out of the wells of salvation, for out of your belly shall come living water. Okay? And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Granted, of course, you come to him on his terms because there are people out there who say, you know, say simply because they can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That means that they're saved? No, they're not broken. They have no contrition, no fear of the Lord. They're just uttering words. Okay? They, uh, they boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. Watch out for anybody who has anything to do with anything that says, boot the door. Beware. Okay? <laughs> Beware. <laughs> All right? And in that day, verse 4, and in that day shall you say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Okay? Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. You want to you wanna ever, someone asks you, what does Jehovah mean? Go to Isaiah 12. Go to Isaiah 12. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Six, the number of man. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Now, now, uh, Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26, one second. All right. Isaiah 26. <clears throat> in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. Uh, Isaiah 26, verses 1 on to verse 4. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks, open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. 
Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Let's read on to verse 5. Let's read on to verse 5. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city. He layeth it low. He layeth it low, even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. One second, please. Sorry about that. So, the seven times that the word, the name Jehovah appears in Scripture, we have looked at. Okay? Uh, what is it? Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. Okay? Psalm 83, Isaiah 12, and Isaiah 26. And also in um, a variation in Genesis chapter 22, uh, Exodus 17, and Judges 6. Seven times. Seven times. Four in the singular name as attributed to the Lord himself, and three to places, okay? And the altar, okay? All right? Now, some might argue about what is written in Psalm 68. Devils like to argue. Devils like to argue. Devils like to say, yea, hath God said. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Uh, one on the, uh, Psalm 68, verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? okay we got to mention this. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name. Ja. J-A-H. And rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless. A judge of the widows. Is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dry in the, dwell in a dry land. Ja. J-A-H. Now, this appearance right here is where people will come up with that thing referred to the tetranoma, uh, tetratama, tetranomagon or whatever it's called. Tetranomagon. The Yudway, Hudway, the Y-W-H thing. Um, yeah, they come to this. They come to this. Okay? Yahweh, they say. It's actually Yahweh. And what's interesting too, the word hallelujah, they derive from this. But you know about hallelujah? A couple of years ago, the Lord had me do a video on that, so we're not going to talk about it. Find in the authorized version Within the text of Scripture, find me hallelujah. You're not going to find it. What will you find? See, and ja, they get hallelujah. And when you look up the word hallelujah, it has of Latin and, oh, surprise, surprise, Romish. Origin. Hmm. Are words important? <laughs> Bet your buttocks. Oh, only only if you decide they are for whatever it is for the certain. Eh, shut up. Go away. Uh, Revelation chapter nineteen, verses one hundred verse seven. And after these things. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! Alleluia! You're looking at that, how that's spelled. All, A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A. -L -L -E well, in the Greek, anyone comes to you well in the Greek, get rid of them. There yea hath God said. The Greek, the Hebrew had its place to give us this, okay? 
the perfect standard. And you got these Jesuit educa uh, educated twits coming around saying, yea, hath God said, they don't believe in a perfect standard. They are their own perfect standard. They say that there is no such thing as a perfect word of God. Get rid of them. Stay away from them. Okay? But it's hallelujah, not hallelujah. Okay? The Greek and the Hebrew served its purpose. We have the perfect and errant given by the inspiration word of God. You don't need the Greek or the Hebrew. Going to the Greek and the Hebrew always produces, yea, hath God said, striving about words that cause questions and strifes. Okay? There are some examples for it. Here's an example. Um, the word pharmakeia, which appears in Galatians and um, uh, Revelation. I believe it's Galatians. But pharmakeia, sorcery, witchcraft. We have pharmacies today, okay? Now that, that is a point of interest, okay? But there again, that is a Greek word, pharmakeia. Pharmacies, witchcraft, which in the scriptures is witchcraft and sorcery. So that's when, when you come to pharmacists and pharmacies, they're, they're witchcraft, it's sorcery, okay? Okay, but when you got someone especially, well, the name is actually Yahashua or Yahashawashi or whatever. More on that in a bit. Okay, but it, it, it's it's like it's it's crazy, it's crazy. But see, it's Alleluia, not Hallelujah. Okay, and Tetronomicon, I believe that's what that's called. The four Yudway Hudway. Okay, and Yahweh Yudway Hudway does not appear in the scriptures. Okay, they base that teaching of the Yudway Hudway of, of Ja. Okay, Yahweh doesn't appear in here. Okay, Yudway Hudway doesn't appear in here either. And I know of a Jewish brother who is actually saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, who would be the first to protest that onto his own people, his own kindred of the Jew, the Hebraic people. And oh boy, did it cost them something. That's why I get so ups uptight against these people who call themselves Jews and they are not. From, from the beginning of this walk, the Lord had me to, to, go for the, to go to the Jews, the Hebrews. Okay? But anyway, let's continue here. And uh, Revelation 19, verse 2. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, Roman Catholicism, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia! And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Hallelujah doesn't appear in Scripture. Hallelujah does. Okay? Watch out for that tetranomagon or tetranomaton or whatever it's called. Okay, the four consonants that make up yudway chudway. Okay, it's not in scripture, and that's not how the Lord is known to us today. Okay, watch out for that. Now go to Isaiah chapter seven. Isaiah chapter seven. Mm. One second, please. <clears throat> Having a couple issues here. Okay. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 7. Oh, the great Sam Spit, who said, quote, God uses easy believism. You know, Sam Spit, he made... Uh, uh, what is it, the God's Answer book or something. And Sam Spit, Sam Gip, 
Sam Spit made a seven part video about what's the big deal about the King James, which was pretty decent, which was pretty decent. Um, it was pointed out to me by a brother, but in that he was still giving credence to um, new versions. Yeah. Uh, don't trust that guy. And that guy, I've seen, I've watched, I've tried to get into Sam Spit. Uh, I just can't do it. Good to be in church. Good to be in the house of God. It's like, I don't have a pride problem. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anybody who says to you, who has the chutzpah, to say, I don't have a pride problem. Okay. Um, they do. They demonstrate to you that they don't have a pride problem by rubbing it into your face that they don't have a pride problem. People who do not struggle greatly with pride, and I have met a few, a very few, don't even, that kind of stuff doesn't even come up in their vocabulary, okay? It doesn't, okay? I have met men, men. Fortunately, I have not met a woman whose main struggle is not with pride. Incidentally, the men that I have encountered who's, who, where pride is not a big issue onto them were all terminally ill. Yes, or uh, crippled, you know, with MS, stuff like that. Okay? Yeah. But Isaiah chapter 7, yeah, we have to address this. Okay? We have to address this because the great Sam Spit <laughs> caused all kinds of ruckus and basically said, and I remember that uh, His Holiness from Maine when that came out, he did a really good, and even some of uh, the other people uh, like the uh, uh, Inquisitor from New York, even he jumped on that. It's like, oh boy, that was pretty bad. And he never repented of it. Um, Steve Anderson even, well, then again, Steve Anderson and Sam Spit were always button heads. But <laughs> uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 16. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it, a, ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. A sign. A sign. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Spelled with an I here. What does that mean? We'll look at that in a second. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, or Emmanuel, okay? Therefore the Lord himself God will provide himself a lamb. Okay? Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. A sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What does that mean? Go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Okay? Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, with an E. Okay? Which being interpreted is God with us. Hmm. And Sam Spitz said that his name ought to be um, Emmanuel instead of Jesus. Yeah, hath God said? See, the Emmanuel, Emmanuel, okay, 
was a sign. Okay? The sign that, the sign, the sign that, uh, that the sign. That's what Emmanuel is. God, God with us. And shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Emmanuel. Okay? The sign was Emmanuel. The sign. Hey, the sign unto the Jews. Emmanuel. And his name is Jesus Christ. Okay? It's the sign. All right? Sam Spitz said that his name is actually Emmanuel and that we've been calling him Jesus for... No. No. A sign. The sign. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Or else, why aren't we calling him Emmanuel? Hmm? Yeah, hath God said? Watch out for Sam Spit, by the way. Seriously. Seriously. You, you talk about an arrogant person. Okay? You talk about someone who's got some pride. Okay? Wow. Wow. Yeah, even His Holiness in Maine would say of Sam Spit, yeah, that guy's pretty arrogant. Yeah. Yeah, okay? Now, go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Emmanuel. Okay, the sign that God is with us. Okay, and Emmanuel was only mentioned in the Old Testament under the law as the sign God with us. Okay, that's what Emmanuel is talking about. God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. And what is God with us? What is his name? What is his name? Hmm? What is his name? It's Emmanuel. That's the name of the sign that God is with us. But what is his actual name? Okay? You see? You see how they twisted that? Do you see? The sign is Emmanuel. So we'll call his name Emmanuel. Yes, that God, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay? There is Emmanuel. God with us. What is God with us? His, what is his name? Do you see? Do you see how Sam Spit twisted that? And got a lot of people like, whoa! And rightfully so. Even devils were had to be like, wow, okay, dude, that's pretty bad. Okay? <laughs> All right? All right? But uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Okay? John chapter 10. Verses 7 on to verse 11. John chapter 10. Verses 7 on to verse 11. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Again, beware of anybody who's associated with anything that says, boot the door, and they're claiming to be a Christian, and they're all about boot the door. The door is Jesus Christ. Watch out for devils like that. Please, for your own sake, okay? All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep hear, heard, did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in, go in and out. He's referring on to the redemption of the purchased possession. Go in to the body of Christ, the church of the living God, upon him saving you, and then eventually we going out, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? And find pasture. The thief cometh not, 
but for it to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come. Look at that. Stop. Look at that. I am come. I am come. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifests in the flesh. Okay? God with us. Emmanuel. What is his name, though? What is his name? It's Emmanuel. No, it's Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am, what are we reading to? I am, verse 11. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. There, the thing about that I said, the I am's, okay? Now, John chapter 14, of course, we, we can't avoid this when talking about this. John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 9. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, like I said, get your, get your pen or your pencil. When you read through the book of John, circle all the times that the Lord says, I am. Fascinating, okay? All right? <clears throat> that where I am, there ye may be also. also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus, not Emmanuel, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Hmm. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Relational there again. They were at the Last Supper, weren't they? Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Oy vey. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Okay? Jesus is the Father. Okay? Jesus is the Father. That's, that's pretty simple, okay? Now go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. What are you doing, Brad? John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. Capital W Word appears seven times in the authorized version. It appears six times in a Bible because the Bibles take out 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the Johannian comma, which perfectly describes the Godhead, okay, which is uh, spirit, soul, and body, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, okay? They call it the Johannian comma, <laughs> Jesuits. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the light was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 on verse 3. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, spoke. Let there be light and there was light. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Okay? Okay? All right. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, 
that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And God said, okay, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And what is his name? What is his name? Hmm? It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. God with us. Jesus Christ. Okay? Well, it says his name will be Emmanuel. Emmanuel means what? God with us. What is God's name who is with us? Hmm? Is it God Almighty? No, it isn't. Is it the Lord God of hosts? No, it isn't. That's where those were uh, for other dispensations. Huh? Was it Jehovah? No. But the name Jesus, did you see were you going along when we looked at Jehovah? What did Jehovah, the name, encompass? Hmm? Hmm? That he sees, that he swears, that he brings peace, that he saves. Jesus, Jehovah saves. Okay, you get it? But as many as received him... To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word, <laughs> willfully ignorant fools can't understand this. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And of course, Genesis chapter 3, we already took, uh, looked at that. And of course, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the Johannian comma. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, Spirit's own body. Okay? All right? All right? And uh, now let's go to, now, Jesus. Jehovah saves. Okay? Now, like I said, the word Jehovah does not appear in the New Testament. But Jesus is the Father. Okay? The name Jesus. Jesus. Jehovah saves. And what does Christ mean? Luke chapter, tw uh, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. One verse. Verse 26. Luke Chapter 2, verse 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Lord's Christ. Hmm. You mean Satan has a Christ too? <laughs> yeah, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Which uh, somebody's got to tell Mr. Jeffrey Grider, it's not macaroni or macaron. Okay, something's wrong with that guy, by the way. Okay, but, but, okay, look at that verse. Look at that verse. Where are we? Verse 26. Okay. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. What does that mean? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 16 on verse 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me. Christ means anointed one. Okay? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of the sight of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again 
to minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. God amongst us. God was amongst them. And his name is Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. The anointed one. Jehovah saves. Jesus Christ. Okay? All right? And that, that is uh, what he read was Isaiah 61, verses 1 on to verse 6. You can go ahead and look at that on your own. And you know what? Be thorough. Let's do this. Okay? Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. Okay? Verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Isaiah 61. Verses 1 on to verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall rise up the raise, they shall rise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vineyard, vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentile, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Okay? This is what the Lord was quoting, by the way. But Christ means anointed one. Okay? But see, now people will get into this argument, well, it's, it's actually, and they say always to the Greek, it's Yehoshua or Yehoshua. Okay? Um, about that, Yehoshua, Jehoshua means Joshua, not Jesus. People get confused about something um, in Acts chapter 7, which we're going to address. But Numbers chapter 13, okay? Numbers chapter 13, okay? Joshua has not saved us, okay? Jehovah saves, has saved us. Jesus, okay? Jesus, all right? All right, and go to, what do we want? We want Numbers 13. Numbers 13, okay? Come on, fingers, work with me. Numbers 13. We just want one verse, verse 16. Okay, Numbers 13, verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. Joshua. Joshua. Okay? Joshua. Well, the Greek and the Hebrew, shut up. We have the perfect word of God in our hands. The finished product, if you will. Those who bring up, well, it's Jehoshua, or Jehoshua, or Jehoshawashi, okay? That's yea hath God said. They're trying to take away from the name of Jesus, okay? And it's Jesus saves. Jesus saves, okay? But, and also there is in 1 Chronicles chapter 7. 1 Chronicles chapter 7, okay? 1 Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 27. All right. Nun his son. Jehoshua his son. Okay. And there, that's that's it to the verse in First Chronicles chapter 7. Verse, um, what was that? Verse 27. Yes. Yes. Nun his son. Jehoshua his son. Talking about Joshua. Joshua. Not Jesus. But here's where people, here's where Satan comes in with that nonsense and confuses people. God is not the author of confusion, okay? Go to Acts chapter 7. Here's where Satan comes in and starts messing with people. Because, hey, do it, do it yourself, 
okay? You go up to lost people and you say to them, uh, Jehoshua bless you. Who? Jehoshua. His name is Jehoshua. But you start using the name of Jesus. I have been told on me, you brethren and sisters uh, of the Church of the Living God, how many times have you been told, it's like, I don't want to hear the name of Jesus anymore. Quit talking about Jesus. But yet you go around and say, well, it's Yehoshua or Yehoshua or Yehoshawashi. Okay? <laughs> as far as I'm aware, too, um, like in Swahili, there is no word for Jesus in Swahili. But you go talking, taking the name, the Hebraic people, the Jews. Now, Yeshua is Jehovah saves in Yiddish, Hebrew, yes. But as any truly saved, born again, converted Jew of the Church of the Living God, will testify. They get around their people, their own people, the kindred of the Heb, uh, of the Hebrews that are come from Shem, who are descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They start talking about Jesus. Using the name Jesus at, incites all kinds of hostility. Okay? Okay? Look, if you're Jewish and you're going to use the name uh, Yeshua, that's your own tongue, fine. But we all know, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you start using the name of Jesus. I, I've encountered it. My, you have encountered I'm sure. I'm sure you have. Talking about Jesus and Jesus this, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You start talking about Jesus, huh? There's power in the name of Jesus. And around lost people, especially. See, the coadjutors have been conditioned to use the name Jesus. But you got to remember, they're talking about a, another Jesus. They're talking about another Jesus. They're basically making reference onto that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? That's who they're talking about. Satan's Christ. That man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay, that's the Jesus that these coadjutors are talking about. But they are trained in such a way where they can say the name of Jesus, but it doesn't affect them. Why? Because they know that they're not talking about the Jesus of the scriptures. But when you as the church of the living God start talking about the Jesus of the scriptures, boy, that you'd start talking about the Jesus, saying the name of Jesus around some of these lost people. It affects them. Doesn't it? But Acts chapter 7. Here's where Satan starts to uh, sow confusion. Acts chapter 7 verses 44 on to verse 46. Okay. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles. And now see, they will go, these people who want to, um, uh, want to get away from the name of Jesus, who dispute the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is pagan, they will go while well, the Greek is Yahashua or Yahashua or Yahashawashi or whatever nonsense. The Greek and the Hebrew were there to give us this, okay? And that says Jesus, okay? So Joshua means Jesus. Jesus is Joshua. No, no, dear friend. Let's, let's continue, let's continue, okay? Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of of our fathers onto the days of David. Who who got the people out of the uh, the promised land? Well that'd be um, that'd be Joshua. But who was the one who was guiding Joshua? It was Jesus. I, I, I'm gonna prove that to you in just a second, okay? Hold on. Now let's read verse 46. Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the 
the God of Jacob. Now, now let's look at verse 45 again. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles. Hmm. Now then you go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. This one doesn't do it that much justice, but we're, we will explain what this is actually talking about. Hebrews chapter 4. So many people want to do away with the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. And they go to Yahashua, Yahashua, Yahashawashi. And the name of Jesus is a pagan name. It's Jesus saves. The glorious, beautiful name of Jesus Christ. See, the false, the coadjutors, the infiltrators, they hate the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Excuse me. They hate the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. I just messed up. Excuse me. See, even I make mistakes. They, no, they love the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Excuse me. Slap myself. See, even I make mistakes. But the Jesus Christ of the scriptures, the Jesus Christ of the scriptures, they hate. And they'll do anything to discredit the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. See, even I make mistakes. Okay? But see, these are the scriptures, not the Bible. Okay? But, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 8. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today after so long a time, as it is said, today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, they would not, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. Hmm. Now, they'll go, they say that, now that's talking about Joshua again. Okay? But um, during, the, during the dispensation of the law, did Jesus give them rest? They were, they were constantly falling, uh, rising up and falling, rising up and falling, going after other gods, okay? The rest wasn't then, yet, okay? The rest is coming, okay? All right? Our Lord says, come unto me, all ye who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and ye shall have peace for your souls, okay? That's what our Lord says in the scriptures, okay? But see, at that time, under the law, where the perfect sacrifice had yet to be made, there wasn't a permanent peace, okay? Because that peace that passeth all understanding is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that seal until the day of redemption, okay? And our peace is... It's going to be in eternal eternity, the seventh and final dispensation. Okay? This isn't a contradiction. But what is this ultimately talking about? 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're almost done, by the way. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 unto verse 11. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual capital our rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Who brought 
the children of Israel into the promised land in the Old Testament? Jesus did. He is the rock. God, our Father, is the one who brought them in. So when Stephen in Acts chapter 7 verse 45 says Jesus brought them in, he's not referring to Joshua. He's referring to our Lord Jesus Christ as Paul is right here who says, And all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Jesus. So when Stephen says in Acts chapter 7, verse 45, that Jesus brought them in, he's not referring to Joshua. He's referring unto the Lord, who is the one who actually brought them in. Through Joshua, yes, but it was the Lord who did it. Do you see? Do you see? And you see how Satan will come in on something like that and twist it to attack the precious name of Jesus. Do you see? Let's continue, okay? But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things were our examples to the intent. We should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us, again, tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. To Jesus that Stephen is talking about in Acts chapter 7 is not Joshua, the son of Nun, nor is it the one that whoever wrote Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 4 is not talking about Joshua, the son of Nun. They are talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? But see, in order to make this argument that it's Joshua, they have to do what? They have to go to the Greek because it's not in the authorized version of the scriptures. They have to go to the Greek. Yea, hath God said. Do you see? It's not a contradiction. Okay? And it's not Joshua, the son of Nun, that Stephen is talking about. Why? Cross-reference here. What Paul said. That rock that followed them. That was Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You get it? Watch out for these devils. Who say, it's Yahashua. 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 Or Yahashawashi. Okay? Or it's Jehovah. Jehovah is not in the New Testament at all. Jehovah saves is in Jesus God amongst us, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Do you see? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay? A name that transcends any language. You can go into another country where English is the farthest dialect. You start saying the name of Jesus, people are going to know what you're talking about. And how glibly do these wicked charismatics, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What Jesus are they talking about? Not the Jesus of the scriptures, but the Jesus of the Bible. Forgive me for that little slip. Okay. It happens. Okay. It happens. Okay. It, it, it takes diligence to adhere to what the scriptures say rather than to be going along with what everybody else says, okay? What Christianity says. And I want nothing to do with Christianity because Christianity is Roman Catholicism, okay? Let's continue. Verse 10. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmur and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples and they are written for our admonition. Unto, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? So, again, when Stephen says Jesus brought them in, he's not talking about Joshua the son of Nun. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Paul confirms it. Okay? Compare scripture with scripture, my friend. All right? Um, and now let's end also on that. Hebrews chapter 13, just one verse, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 13, just one verse, verse 3. Uh, what's it? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I wrote that down. Uh, one second, please. <laughs> okay, sorry. I miss, I wrote down the wrong one. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever, who, who is, and, and what was that in uh, Revelation chapter 4? What was that in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8? And four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest day, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Uh, verse 8 in Hebrews chapter 13, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. See, what changes is how God deals with man. God himself doesn't change, okay? The dispensations are how God, man is made right with God in that dispensation. That changes. When you got these heretic twits saying it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation, uh, no, they're saying that salvation doesn't change, okay? They're saying that it's been the same way from beginning to end. No, it has not been. Okay, the very first dispensation in scripture proves them wrong. It was only works in the Garden of Eden and um, in the kingdom of heaven. It will be only works. Okay, but they're saying that salvation is the same from beginning to end. That is not true. But God doesn't change how he deals with man. That is what changes. Do You understand? Okay, that is what changes. That is what changes. And today, today, see, in the Old Testament, God would appear in the form of a man. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. But unlike, okay, unlike, go now to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, okay? Acts chapter 4. See, what happened was, and we're, uh, we're getting, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, um, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, God was manifest in the flesh. He was born of a woman made under the law. Where before in the Old Testament, as a man, he would just appear. Come and go. Okay? But see, he was born of a woman made under the law. The word became flesh. Okay? The word became flesh. Okay? The word became flesh. Not flesh became the word, okay? Got to watch out for that. But, okay, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 12. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Ananias, the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have ye done this? Whose name? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Emmanuel, oh, no, by the name of Yahashua, no, oh, by the name of Yehoshua, no, by the name of Yahashawashi, are you serious? Huh. By the name of the Lord of hosts, no. By the name of the Lord God of hosts, no. By the name God Almighty, no. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, Jehovah saves the anointed one. Okay? Jehovah, no. 
Jehovah saves. Yes, Jehovah saves. But the name Jehovah is not in the New Testament. Okay? See, unto the Jews, his chosen people, known as Jehovah, unto us, Jesus Christ. And unto the Hebraic people, the Jews, Jesus, the son of David, because he is the king of the Jews, king of kings and lord of lords. Okay? We as Gentiles, and, and you read in the scripture that when um, the Gentile woman called Jesus, Lord, thou son of David, he ignored her. But when the blind beggar uh, heard that Jesus passed by, he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And he's like, whoa, stop. Okay? You see? What changes is the dispensation. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Be known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Then you got these people who come around, it's like, no, it's Yahashawashi. Or Ye hath God said. They hate the Jesus of the scriptures, but they love the Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. Again, forgive me for making that little slip. <laughs> even I make mistakes unlike some of these perfect, holier-than-thou preachers out there who never do. Yeah. This is the stone which, is, which was set at naught of you builders, like masons, who are building their own temples, uh, making their way to heaven by their works. Yeah, right, right. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. The head cornerstone is our Lord Jesus Christ. And how many people out there don't want that? And how do they do it? They attack the name. Or they counterfeit his name when they say Jesus, but they're actually making reference on to Satan's Christ, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Now, neither, oh, look at that verse in Acts chapter 4. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Proverbs 18. Just, just one verse. Proverbs 18. One verse. Just one verse. Proverbs 18. Just one verse. Verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. What is his name? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh. Okay? God with us. And what is God with us? What is his name? Jesus Christ. Okay? Emmanuel, God with us, the sign. It's the name of the sign that God was manifest in the flesh. But his name actually is Jehovah saves. Jesus. Christ, the anointed one. It's the name of Jesus. Okay? Let there be no confusion. Okay? And uh, Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, verses 1 on to verse 6. The words of Agor, the son of Jekah, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ukal. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar. Yea, hath God said. No, it's actually Yahashawashi. 
or Yahweh Yahweh Yahweh. See, has God said. See, has God said. And of course, of course, you know, you, you read uh, Romans chapter 10. <laughs> read Romans chapter 10. You come to the Lord on his terms, broken, broken of your self righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow. Uh, you're the one who put him on the cross. It's your fault. Yes. And fear of the Lord, because if you don't get saved by him, he's going to send you to hell and you deserve to uh, go to hell and you call upon his name and he save you. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. <laughs> that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahashawashi, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you come to this point by being broken. Because there are some out there who can merely can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord. And they say, well, God knows my heart. And they 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 parade around trying to masquerade that they're saved they're not okay because they've never been broken it's always someone else's fault and they have no fear of the lord okay that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus well the greek means it's actually yehoshua and galatians chapter four galatians chapter four and see here's the thing like I said, in the Old Testament, the Lord would appear as a man. Yes, he would. But see, what happened in this dispensation, Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we... When we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Why? To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And you got people trying to tell you you got to keep the law today to be saved. And they say, it's not Jesus, but it's Yahashawashi. And of course, let's go now to the one place that everybody, even you, were thinking of. Philippians chapter 2. We saved it for last. We went through this process, okay? All right? Jesus Christ, the same uh, yesterday, today, and forever, yes. But God changes how he deals with man, okay? On to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was known as God Almighty, okay? On to the children of Israel, being brought into the promised land, Jehovah, okay? And uh, reference as the Lord God of hosts and the uh, Lord of hosts by the kings and the prophets. More titles, okay? But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. Okay, what, what was that in Galatians chapter 4? Verse 4, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to Redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. You don't have to keep the law today to be saved. To say, stay saved or be right with God. That's trying to take something from another dispensation and make it applicable for this dispensation. And that's heresy. Okay? Alright? But see, what changed? God doesn't change, but how... God deals with man. God shall provide God will provide himself a lamb. We looked at it. Okay? Who is on that cross? 
Okay? Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 11. We're almost done. We're almost done. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. And that's very important. There are some people who I thought were, were a brother, and I thought we were like-minded, but come to find out, it's like, whoa, you're crazy. Yeah. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. Well, it's uh, Yahashawashi, or... It's, uh, or because of the color of my skin, I'm a chosen one. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And the Bible's messed this up. Horribly, okay? But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Hold your place there. And here's something that uh, a lot of willfully ignorant people can't handle. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. The scriptures themselves say that the flesh, that the Word was manifest in that flesh. Okay? That flesh itself was sinful. Christ never sinned. He kept the law perfectly. And in him keeping the law perfectly, that sinful flesh was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly. This is not rocket science to figure out. But those who worship the flesh will combat this and do everything contrary to it because it's all about flesh, because flesh saves them. Okay? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh... God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Go back to Philippians chapter 2. Okay. Picking up in verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So what's this name above every name? Hmm? Jehovah? If it were to be Jehovah, it would say specifically in the word, the scriptures, Jehovah. Jesus. Jehovah saves. But if it were Jehovah, it would say Jehovah. It's Jesus. Okay? God Almighty. No. Yohashua. Yehashua. Yohashawashi. No. Lord God of hosts. God of hosts. No. Ja. Yodle Hudle. Yahweh. No. No. No, 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 no. No. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Not Joshua. Okay? And Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. And Isaiah chapter 45. 
verses 22 on to verse 25. We're almost done. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 22 on to verse 25. Jehovah saves. Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ means Jehovah saves. God amongst us. It's the name of Jesus. Not Emmanuel. Which is interpreted God among God with us. Yes. Yes. God is with us. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. You have God the Father, Jesus Christ, living in you. It's Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus. Okay? But Isaiah 45, verses 22 on to verse 25. Look unto me, all, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have, look at this, I have sworn by myself, Jehovah Nisai, okay? The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. And the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Now, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, even in other tongues, you start saying the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. Because remember, a lot of a lot of the Christians who say Jesus this and Jesus that, what Jesus are they talking about? They that read a Bible, not the Scriptures. So, uh, uh, <laughs> again, one last, and this is going to be it. And we will be done. Okay? Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Oh, Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18 on to verse 20. Matthew chapter uh, 28, which is this dispensation. Because he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood when he died. He's like, it's finished. It's finished. He paid the price for our sins. That brought in the new dispensation. Okay? This dispensation. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Singular. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. In the name of. In the name of a singular name. Which one? Well, there's so many names, right? No, there's only one name. Jesus Christ. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And what does it say in the Johannian comma? Hmm? What does it say in the Johannian comma? Verse 7. Of uh, verse. Um, yeah. Verse 7. Uh, 1 John chapter 5. Verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. The Word. And the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And it's Jesus Christ. The only name. Not Jehoshua. Not Jehoshua. Not Jehashawashi or whatever nonsense you want to say. Okay? Not Emmanuel. Hmm? Not God Almighty. Not Jehovah. But Jesus Christ. Okay? God with us is Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves is Jesus Christ. There's only one name. And it's proofed onto me, at least, and to, onto many. If you are one of these Christians who are disputing the name of Jesus Christ, 
then the name of Jesus Christ means absolutely nothing to you because then you are not saved. There is a point of ignorance. Yes, there is. A babe might, well, is it? Hey, you babes, this is, this is God's preserved, perfect, given by inspiration word, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? These are the scriptures. Yes, it says Bible. It doesn't say Bible within the pages of the scripture, okay? I made that little slip up. Excuse me. These are the scriptures, okay? All right? For us today, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's going to be Jesus Christ on the throne in eternity, okay? It's the name of Jesus Christ, okay? Unknown to them as in the Old Testament, but known unto all today, yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus Christ. Watch out. Because if someone's going to dispute that, well, it's not, it, that Greek says his name, they're not. If they're ignorant, if they're ignorant, that's one thing. Okay, you, you tell them the truth. You show them the truth. Give them a link to this if you got to. Okay, but you go, you show them the truth. And we have looked at scriptures today showing you that it's Jesus Christ. Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. And see, this is also a result of people who don't rightly divide the word of truth that think the scriptures just all blend together and that everything is written to you. This is written for us, but it's not all written to us. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? So, that's going to be it for this uh, video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this has been helpful to you. I know this is going to irritate some. I understand that uh, because they don't like the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures, but they want a pliable God, one who doesn't judge, who loves unconditionally. They, they're looking for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay. And on to you who sent me that email where you brought this up. If you make it this far, thank you. Thank you. Going to get this uh, uploading. Brethren, pray for one another. Please uh, continue to pray for us as we pray for so many of you. Pray for one another. Be there for one another as you can. We love you. Thank you so very much to all of you. Thank you to those of you who pray for us and who help us. Thank you. Praise the Lord for you. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.